Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about contract transmission and precautions. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. So, the learning objectives we will be discussing in this video will be what is contact transmission? Factors contributing to contact transmission Diseases transmitted through contract transmission And what are contact precautions? First, let's know what is contact transmission. Contact transmission refers to infection that is spread through direct or indirect contact with an infected person. There are two primary types of contact transmission, direct contact transmission and indirect contact transmission. Next, let's discuss how direct contact and indirect contact transmission occurs. First comes transmission through direct contact. This occurs when there is direct physical contact between an infected person and a susceptible individual. Pathogens can be transmitted through various forms of physical contact that is skin-to-skin -skin contact, sexual contact, direct contact with body fluids, direct contact with respiratory droplets. Let's discuss it in detail. In skin-to-skin -skin contact, what happens is, pathogens can be transferred when the skin of an infected person comes into direct contact with the skin of a susceptible individual. For example, hugging, shaking hands, or touching. In sexual contact, certain sexually transmitted infections can be transmitted through sexual activity, including vaginal, anal, or oral sex. Examples include HIV, syphilis, herpes, gonorrhea, and chlamydia. Direct contact with body fluids, what happens is, pathogens can be transmitted through direct contact with infected body fluids such as blood, saliva, urine, semen, vaginal secretions, or breast milk. This can occur through activities like sharing needles or syringes, breastfeeding, or exposure to contaminated blood or other body fluids. Direct contact with respiratory droplets. When an infected person coughs, sneezes, or talks, respiratory droplets containing pathogens can be directly transmitted to a susceptible individual who is in close proximity. Next, let's discuss indirect contact transmission. Indirect contact transmission refers to the spread of infectious diseases through contact with contaminated surfaces, objects, or fomites rather than physical contact. Here, pathogens can be transmitted through various forms including contaminated surfaces and objects, fomites, and indirect contact transmission. Let's discuss one by one in detail. Contaminated surfaces and objects. Here, pathogens can survive on surfaces or objects for varying periods depending on the specific pathogen and environmental conditions. When a susceptible individual touches a contaminated surface or object, they can acquire the pathogens and become infected if they then touch their face, mouth, nose, or eyes. Fomites. Fomites are inanimate objects or materials that can harbor infectious agents and serve as a source of transmission. Examples of fomites include doorknobs, countertops, toys, computer, keyboards, clothing, bedding, medical equipment, and shared items like utensils or towels. Common indirect contact transmission scenarios include Healthcare settings. Here, contaminated medical equipment, surfaces, or hands, or healthcare workers can transmit pathogens to patients or between patients. Community settings. Here, contaminated surfaces in public spaces such as handrails, elevator buttons, or shopping carts can contribute to the spread of infectious diseases. Here comes infectious diseases transmitted through contact transmission. They include 
Methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus that is MRSA, Vancomycin resistant Enterococcus infection that is VRE, Scabies impetigo, Herpes simplex virus, Human papilloma virus that is HPV, Sexually transmitted infections, Hepatitis B and C infections, Respiratory infections, etc. Next, let's discuss contact precautions. First comes hand hygiene. Next is personal protective equipment, PPE, that is mask, gloves, gowns, and eye protection. Next is patient education, respiratory hygiene or cuff etiquette. Next comes environmental cleaning and disinfection. Let's discuss it one by one. Hand hygiene. Hand hygiene is the foundation of infection control. Nurses should perform hand washing with soap and water or use alcohol-based hand sanitizers before and after every patient contact, especially when there is a risk of contact with bodily fluids or contaminated surfaces. Next comes personal protective equipment, gloves. Nurses should wear gloves when there is a risk of direct contact with bodily fluids, open wounds, or contaminated surfaces. Gloves should be changed between patient interactions and removed properly to prevent cross-contamination. Gowns Gowns are worn to protect clothing and skin from contact with potentially infectious materials. Nurses should wear gowns when there is a risk of splashes or contamination of clothing with bodily fluids. Masks and eye protection Depending on specific situation and infectious agents involved, Nurses may need to wear masks and eye protection such as goggles or face shields to protect against respiratory droplets or splashes. Prioritize cleaning and disinfection of the rooms of patients on contact precautions ensuring rooms are frequently clean and disinfected. For example, make sure it is cleaned daily or prior to use by another patient in case of outpatient setting. Also, focus on frequently touched surfaces and equipments in the immediate vicinity of the patient. Next contact precautions include patient placement and cohorting, limit transport and movement of the patients, use disposable or dedicated patient care equipments. Patient placement and cohorting includes placement of the patient, for example, the distance of separation, between each patient's privacy curtains between each patient's in cohorting depending upon the conditions. Next is limit transport and movement of patients outside of the room to medically necessary purposes. When transport or movement is necessary, cover or contain the infected or colonized areas of the patient's body. Remove and dispose of contaminated personal protective equipments and perform hand hygiene prior to transporting patients on contact precautions. Make sure that you don't clean personal protective equipment to handle the patients at the transport location. Next is use disposable or dedicated patient care equipment, for example, blood pressure cuffs. If common use of equipment for multiple patients is unavoidable, clean and disinfect such equipment before use on another patient's. So these are all the contact precautions for direct and indirect contact transmissions. Now, let's take a few moments to discuss some of the important points in contact precautions. First and foremost comes the hand hygiene. Everyone, including healthcare workers and apart from healthcare workers, should follow proper hand hygiene whoever comes in contact with the patients. Hand hygiene is followed properly, keeping in mind the five golden moments. Next is wearing gloves. Put on the gloves before entering the room and as and when necessary. Why? Because all the procedure doesn't indicate wearing gloves. And once the procedure or the work is done, remove the gloves before you exit the room. Next comes gown. Like discussed before, with the use of gloves, 
Put on the gown before entering the room. Gowns are indicated in case of procedure which includes contact with bodily fluids or splashes. Make sure one gown is used for completing the procedure for one patient and it is discarded before we exit the room. Next is use dedicated or disposable equipment for the patients. That is clean and disinfect reusable equipment before use on another patient. For example, while using stethoscopes, the diaphragm of the stethoscope can be cleaned by sanitizing swabs and then used for another patient. So, so far we have discussed about the contact transmission. What do we mean by contact transmission? And two types that is direct and indirect contact transmission, the mode of transmission, the diseases spread through contact transmission and contact precautions. So here you go with contact transmission and precautions. If you find this video useful, please like it, share it and subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.